I've experienced Scott's kindness and it reminds me of water skiing, which I learned to do thanks to Rod Renee Martin. Thank you very much. And whenever the boat would turn and you'd have to cross the wake, I'd always just expect that I'm going to go down, I'm going to get pulled under, I'm not going to be able to maintain my balance. Um, and then sometimes I wouldn't go down and I'd just be in awe that I'm still up and it was so much fun. Um, and so before COVID came, there were some other th hard things that happened, some deaths and things. And then when, when the virus came, I'm a nurse, so it was like in, impactful in those ways. And um, every time some new bad news came or things changed at work or something else hard happened, I would just feel like I'm about to go down. I'm crossing another week and this is going to be the one that pulls me under. But God has just been very kind and sent a lot of affirmation and encouragement through other people. And... Um, hope through nature and he comes into the darkness himself and tells me his perspective and that changes how things feel how reality feels and so his kindness is just kind of keeping me up riding the wake and it's pretty fun good morning Greenmont family i feel that god has been revealing himself to me our church and our nation as a loving father who is very disappointed in us for our turning away from him we have pushed him to the limit of his patience and i believe that this is the time of the father's discipline it says in Hebrews 12, 7, that we should endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? We as a church need to follow the admonition of 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. I know that individually we don't support the godless actions of our nation. But we as a church have been silent and ineffective to stop the frog in the water mentality that lets evil succeed. A familiar quote, the only thing necessary for triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. I don't know or even have a picture of where this should lead us. I'll keep this and our church in prayer. Recently, God's mercy and patience has been really evident to me because I always feel like I'm not praying enough, I'm not worshiping enough, I'm not reading my Bible enough, and especially recently, because I don't have an excuse now, I'm not doing anything. But someone told me recently that they had a word from God for me, and it wasn't that he's disappointed in me, it was that he sees me as his cheerleader. And when I think of a cheerleader, I think of someone full of enthusiasm and excitement. A cheerleader would never be on the sidelines while their team is scoring a point. And God does things for me daily, and I rarely even thank Him. But He is merciful, and He treats me with love and kindness, even when I deserve to be judged. He patiently encourages me in the direction He wants me to go. Hey guys, so I wanted to share with you today a little bit about God's patience. I know that um, we're all crammed up in our houses with our families, and that all sounds really great until patience starts to run thin. And I know here in my house, I have lost my patience numerous times with my family. Our house is small. We've been having a hard time finding ways to be alone and finding ways to get away from each other. So here I am in my car doing this video because it's literally the only place to have some privacy. Anyway, I wanted to just share a scripture with you. And it is 1 Timothy 1 14 through 16 and the grace of our lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in christ jesus this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom i am chief however for this reason i obtained mercy that in me first jesus christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. You know, I haven't been very patient lately, but I'm so thankful that God is patient with me. He gives me one more chance and one more chance and one more chance and reminds me that with his Holy Spirit, I can be patient with my family members and patient with myself. And so today I'm really thankful for God's patience. See you guys. The past few weeks, I have really been seeing God as my father. And as I've been reading through the Old Testament with the story, I've really noticed how God disciplined Israel and is disciplining us because he loves us and he wants us to know him and be able to recognize his voice. When he called Saul into leadership, Saul was obedient at first. 
And then he started to be led by his emotions and his feelings and disobeyed God's plan. And I've been thinking about that a lot as we go through these difficult times right now and wondering whether I'm acting out of my feelings of worry and anxiety or whether I'm listening for God's voice when he calls me to remain in him and be a light in the darkness. Um, the song, The Goodness of God by Bethel says, for I've known you as a father and I've known you as a friend and I've lived in the goodness of God. And I believe that our God is good and that he is a good father and that if we are listening, he can call us to something really great, even in these hard times. Hey, Greenmont. So what do these times reinforce to me about the character of God? Well, I think what it does is differentiate the character of God from the character of man. The character of man being fragile and ever-changing and the character of God, a rock. Let me use a, a term that you hear a lot these days, which is shelter in place. To the world, shelter in place tells us to hide behind our walls, keep away the virus, keep away the hurricane, keep away the tornado, all the scary things and the suffering, keep it outside, don't let it in. Well, the problem with that is that you can't do that. Sooner or later, the storm's gonna find you. It's gonna find me, it's gonna be at our doorstep. Whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, emotional, whether it's a fear of something that may never happen, but we live with it every, every day, sooner or later, it's gonna penetrate those walls, it's gonna penetrate those N95 masks, our health, our wealth, our facade of confidence, and it's gonna, it's gonna come. Sheltering in place in the Lord means to find comfort and peace during the storm. That's what he offers us. So no matter what comes, uh, we are sheltering in his care and his protection. See, God never promises us that we won't have suffering. He promises he'll never leave our side. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Even in the Great Commission, he tells the, the disciples he'll be with you, he'll be with them always. So don't fear the storm welcome it live laugh love don't spend your energy worrying about it because it's going to come and when it does focus first on god and his promises and he won't leave your side